Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Let me confirm if I'm clearly visible, audible. I will start the class ahead. Give me a minute to confirm it. Uh, if I'm clearly visible, audible to you guys, you can write something in the chat box for confirmation. Okay, I hope it is working. Yes, it is working. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very good morning to all of you. A very refreshing morning to all of you. I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I am here to take a series on image based question. So daily in the morning at 9 a.m. In the morning I will take session on image based question IBQs daily. So it is a series which we will run for the whole month. So daily we will take a topic and understand. We will understand the image based question from that particular topic. So today's topic is hematology. In hematology we have to understand the images from RBCs that is anemia. From WBCs that is leukemias and lymphomas, RBC disorders, WBC disorders and platelet disorders. So there are many images from the platelet disorders also. So I will teach you one by one all the topics, not all questions, only image based question. Now all the images which I am taking for, for here for the questions are from Robins. So basically we are decoding Robins, the images of the Robins for your exams. Now in all the exams, whether it is NEET PG, whether it is FMG, whether it is INICT or whether it is going to be next, you know. So in all the exams, nearly 25 to 30 percent questions are going to be image based question. That's why it is need of the art to understand all the image based question. Now out of the 19 subjects, all the 19 subjects, pathology is the vital subject from which many image based question can be created. Because in pathology, everything basically is an image. So in Robbins, there are many, many images. You have to understand all the images, not only the images, what all questions the examiner can frame based on that image. So basically, you have to see the image. You have to read the captions of the image and you have to understand how the examiner can frame the question based on the theory of that image. So you have to understand like that. Pathology is a very vital subject for image based question. Now in pharmacology, you don't have much images. So from pharma, you don't expect image based question, right? Or if you are um, expecting it, maybe a single question or a two question in your exam. But in pathology, you can expect many pathology, microbiology, ophthalmology. So these are the areas where maximum image based question can be created in your exam. So without wasting time, I'm just moving. So today I'm teaching you RBC disorders, images of the RBC disorders, right? I will come on the anemias, definitely. But before that, two things I have to teach you from which images in the RBCs can come. Number one, RBC inclusion bodies and number two, RBC shapes and third, RBC may anemias. So in RBC, basically, I want to teach you all the images, RBC disorders. How many image based question can the examiner can frame on RBCs? So examiner can frame questions on inclusion bodies of the RBC, on the shapes, the various shapes of the RBC and uh, of course the various anemias, the various anemias that is RBC disorders. So we will take all the images one by one. Let me start with RBC inclusion bodies. Let me see how many of you, you know the shape of these five RBC inclusion bodies, right? So basically there are five type of main RBC. What do you mean by RBC inclusion body? What do you mean by inclusion body? What do, what is RBC inclusion body? So there is a RBC. We know what is RBC. RBC is a cell which is non-nucleated. It is biconcave, uh, non-nucleated cell. So inside the RBC, what is the diagram? So peripheral two-third contains hemoglobin. So it is pink in color. Peripheral two-third. But central one-third is empty. The central one-third is empty. It is known as Pellar. It is normal RBC. It is known as Pellar. It is normal RBC in me, in you, in all normal human beings. This is the shape. Now inside this RBC, if any inclusion bodies are present, these are known as in the cytoplasm of the RBC. These are known as RBC inclusion bodies. So there are five type of RBC inclusion bodies. Hoggle Jolly body, Papenheimer body, Haynes body, Cabot ring and basophilic stippling. Now, now three type of IBQs can, can be framed. So total out of five, I can frame 15 IBQs based on these five bodies. So what the examiner can do, first understand, examiner can give you a diagram. Morphology means diagram. Diagram of any one of these. And the simple question, identify the inclusion body. Whether it is this, 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 this. Your five options are in front of you, A, B, C, D, E. Right? So you have to identify it as a simple question. You have to understand the images of all the. That is morphological question. Second, the examiner will give you a diagram. But examiner will not ask to identify the body. Examiner will ask you what is the composition of this body. So you should know the composition respectively of all five. They are made up of what? 
So what is the composition of Hobble Jolly? What is the composition of Papenimer? What is the composition of Haynes body? Composition of Cabot ring? Composition of basophilic stippling? Likewise, right? And the third thing, examiner of course will give you a diagram in the question, the image of any of the body in the question and examiner will not ask you to identify it. Examiner will not ask you to say the composition of this body. Examiner will ask you the condition in which this body is seen. Now these bodies are not normal. All these are seen in some pathology. All these are seen in, seen in some diseases. So, Howell's only body is seen in which disease? Papenimer body is seen in which disease? Haynes body is seen in which disease? So, name the diseases. So, there is a list of diseases. The, but the most important you have to learn. So, many type of questions can be created from inclusion bodies. It is a vital area from which image based question can be created. Now, everyone give me a thumbs up. Those who are watching it live. You got my point? Okay. So, this is the final uh, table. So, what, what is my strategy now? What I am going to do? I am explaining you this table one by one. I will explain you the five bodies one by one and then we will do all the image based question possible on these bodies. Will it work for you? Give me a thumbs up if it works for you. So, first I will give you the theory and then I will ask the questions based on that theory. theory what questions are possible? Right? Give me a thumbs up. Come on. Give me a thumbs up. Am I visible? Audible? Yes. Will it work? So, Tour, Yashwant, Pradeep, Moksh. Okay. Great. So, let me start. So, okay. The table is in front of you. I have already filled the table. Let me start. Can you see the Howell Jolly body? What diagram I have drawn for the Howell Jolly body? I have drawn small RBC. Inside that, it is like a dot-like structure. It is like a dot-like structure. Now, it can be central. It can be peripheral. It can be anywhere in the cytoplasm, but it is always single. So, it is always a single dot. Now, you have to see, see the differences between the five morphologically. I will show you. Don't worry. I will show you. This is Howell Jolly body. Can you see? Okay. Let me mark. So, can you see this one, RBC, this one? Can you see this one? Can you see this one? This one. In this diagram, I can see four. Yeah, I can see four. So, inside them, can you see a dark blue color, basophilic? Here it is central. Here it is approx central. Here it is peripheral. Here it is peripheral. So, the, the conclusion is that Hobble Jolly body is a basophilic. Basophilic means it is dark blue color. Basophilic dot like structure. Number one. Number one. Number two, it can be central in the RBC, it can be peripheral in the RBC. It is not fixed that is, it is always central or it is always peripheral. No, it is not fixed. Number three, it is always single. In one RBC, you will find one Hovel Jolly body. So, based on these features, you have to identify that ma'am, it is a Hovel Jolly body. Now, the, there is a resemblance between the five type of inclusion bodies. You have to differentiate based on these features. Give me a thumbs up, come on. Now, can you identify Hovel Jolly body in any, in any RBC? Okay. So, the first thing we can identify them from their morphology number first thing number second what they are made up of what they are made up of they are the nuclear remnants what do you mean you will say my rbc don't have nucleus now how the rbcs are formed you tell me how rbcs are formed you will say ma'am all the cells are formed in the bone marrow all blood cells rbc wbc platelet they are formed from the bone marrow how they are formed from the bone marrow i'm asking you so they all are formed from hematopoietic stem cells which are the precursor cells of all RBC, WBC platelet. So, let me talk about erythropoiesis. How does it take place from hematopoietic stem cell? What are the intermediates? From hematopoietic stem cells, it is normoblast which is formed. Normoblast. So, it is early normoblast, intermediate normoblast, late normoblast. So, it is the early, intermediate, late. First, pro-normoblast is formed. Pro-normoblast, early, intermediate, late. Then, reticulocyte is formed. And in the end, RBC is formed. So, this is the sequence. So, this RBC came in the blood. Finally, this is RBC formed and this RBC came in the blood. In the blood vessel, this RBC is coming, the mature RBC, right? Now, the precursors, let's talk about the precursors. In the precursors, this hematopoietic stem cell have a nucleus, right? Uh, what about all these cells? Does these precursors have the nucleus? So, at what stage the nucleus is extruded? I am asking you a question. So, pro-normoblast also have a nucleus, early normoblast also have a nucleus at intermediate normoblast stage. At late normoblast stage, at late normoblast stage, the nucleus is extruded. It is extruded out of the RBC and the last two things, that is reticulocyte and RBC are non-nucleated cell. Give me a thumbs up if you got this. This everyone knows. I guess everyone knows this, right? So, nucleus is extruded at which stage? It is also an MCQ. Not a image based question, but yeah, it is an MCQ. That nucleus in the in the erythropoiesis, in the process of the erythropoiesis, the nucleus is extruded out of the cell at late normoblast. The answer is late normoblast. So, up to late normoblast, we have nucleus. But after late normoblast, that is in reticulocyte and RBC, we don't have nucleus. Right, right, yes or no, right. So, basically, if some 
portion of the nucleus is still remaining here. That is a remnant. That is known as Hobel Jolly body. So, what is the Hobel Jolly body? It is the nucleus remnant. It is the remnant of the nucleus in the RBC, not the complete nucleus. But yeah, it is the remnant of the nucleus. Give me a thumbs up. So, what is the composition? Now, you have seen the diagram now. Now, you will never forget. So, what is Hobel Jolly body? How does it look like? It is present inside the RBC, a basophilic blue color dot like structure either at the center or at the periphery anywhere in the cytoplasm, but it is always single. And it is the nuclear remnant. It is the remnant of the nucleus in the RBC. It is seen in splenectomy. Now, uh, the diagram which I have drawn for you, it is gone. But uh, in the blood vessel, if any RBC, now if what you will say, ma'am, in our blood, why these nuclear remnants in a healthy human not present? They are present. I'm not saying no. So these, these HJ, Howell Jolly preserved bodies are present in some of my RBC, your RBC. In normal human beings, they are all also present. So some of the RBC are coming in the blood from the bone marrow with nuclear remnant. That nuclear remnant is known as Howell Jolly body. We got this. But we all have a spleen. I guess we all have spleen. So spleen is the organ from which when RBC pass from the spleen, these RBCs which have Howell Jolly body are removed from the blood. So if you see in my blood, when the RBCs are coming in the blood vessel from the bone marrow, few RBCs have HJ body, Howell Jolly body. But once the blood passes from the spleen, spleen removes all the uh, RBCs which have Howell Jolly body. So after this, none of the RBC will have Howell Jolly body. But imagine a person in which splenectomy is done. The spleen is removed due to any reason. Now, the spleen may have trauma. The spleen may have some tumor. The spleen may have some lymphoma, something. by any The sickle cell anemia or in some hemolytic anemias, in some diseases, we have to remove the spleen as a part of treatment. So, if the person, splenectomy is already done, already done due to any reason. So, such person don't have spleen. So, how will jolly body are not removed? So, if you see the peripheral blood smear of such person, you will find many how will jolly bodies. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I hope everyone got it. If you have any doubt, please ask. So, about how will jolly body, that, that was my summary. How does it look like? What is the composition? It is the nuclear remnant. And when it is seen? It is seen in splenectomy. In sickle cell anemia, autosplenectomy is done. The body does the splenectomy by itself. In trauma, in tumor, in lymphoma, in many conditions when we do the splenectomy. Due to any cause. Give me a thumbs up. Coming on the second body. So, after that, let me come on the second body. Second body is peponemer body. Peponemer body. Now, how does it look like? See, the RBC. I have drawn this RBC for you. Inside the RBC, they are multiple. They are multiple. Number one thing, they are also basophilic. What is the color? The color is blue. So, they are basophilic. But the second thing, they are multiple. You have seen Howell Jolly body, I have drawn single. But here, I have drawn multiple. And it is always peripheral. They are present at the periphery. So, can you see this smear? In this peripheral smear, can you see this RBC? This one. Can you see this RBC? Yes, you all can appreciate this RBC. Inside this RBC, can you see multiple dot-like structures present at the periphery of the RBC? So, these are known as papenemer. 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 Papenemer bodies. Give me a thumbs up. So, what is the composition? How, did, how does they look like? They are basophilic, number one. That is deep blue in color, number one. Number two, they are multiple and they are present always at the periphery. They are never present at the center. Now, can you differentiate? Can you all? Of course, you now you know the difference. Can you differentiate the two inclusion bodies I have told you till now? So, can you differentiate between Howell Jolly body and Papenemer body? Can you differentiate? These are the two RBCs. How to draw? So, Howell Jolly body, okay, here I have to draw two RBCs to show you Howell Jolly body. Howell Jolly body can be present at the center or can be present at the periphery, right? But it is always single. It is always single and deep blue basophilic. Papenemer body are always multiple and they are present only at periphery. They are not single, they are multiple present at the periphery and they are also deep blue. So, color is same. Both of them are deep blue, but one is single, one is multiple, one is present anywhere, um, central or peripheral. The second is always peripheral, right? The single multiple is the main difference between them. So, that is about the papenemer body. Now, tell me the composition. What does it is made up of? Papenemer body ka composition kya? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Pradeep, uh, Sadeshwar, Yashwant. Anyone knows the composition of papenemer bodies? Composition of papenemer body, they are made up of ferritin. You know, what is ferritin? What is ferritin? Ferritin is the storage form of the iron present in blood. Storage form of iron. So, when storage form of iron is too much, excessive ferritin is present in blood. Now, there are some conditions in which blood have excessive ferritin. Uh, there are some anemias. Can anyone tell me the name of such anemia in which blood have excessive ferritin? So, it is anemia of chronic disease. 
right in anemia of chronic disease the human the, the person the patient have excess of paritin but the person cannot utilize that paritin to form hemoglobin paritin is present in the blood but that cannot be utilized that cannot be utilized that is a problem in anemia of chronic disease now nah? i will teach you all anemia don't worry so that is the paritin aggregates you know so paritin so that excess of paritin accumulate inside the rbc in the form of the dots ideally when paritin enters inside the rbc it should be utilized in the formation of the hemoglobin iron converts into hemoglobin but inside this rbc there is some problem that iron cannot be converted into hemoglobin so it get gathered inside the rbc in the form of the paritin you know so in any condition the body have paritin access so that paritin access will enter the rbc and form papanimer bodies i hope you got it the second body is done papanimer bodies we will do the questions also let me explain the five have you got it should i come on the third give me a thumbs up if i come if you are ready for the third the third one is the hains body now what are hains body see the diagram see the diagram can you see a can you see a rbc yes you all can see a rbc inside the rbc c they are also multiple uh see the hains bodies are also multiple like papanimer now you will say ma'am how to differentiate number 1 papanimer are always present at the peripheral hains bodies are present anywhere it is not necessary they are present at the ring like a peripheral they are present anywhere the second difference papanimer bodies are seen on hne stain what stain i have shown you not hne i am sorry not hne it is the what stain romanovsky stain so we see all peripheral smears of the blood uh, in romanovsky stain it can be right stain it can be jimsa stain all stains are romanovsky so it is seen on romanovsky stain the normal not romanovsky stain but hains bodies are not seen on romanovsky stain to see a stain's body you have to do a special stain what is the name of that stain spb mcq hai it also have an mcq this question what is the stain you have to do to see a hains body the hains bodies are seen on yes very good moksha they are seen on supra vital stain so you can't see a hains body on a normal romanovsky stain if you want to see a hains body you have to do supra vital stain let me show you a hains body okay so this one can you see first question on this first question identify the stain can you see what stain it is is it is it a romanovsky stain c on romanovsky stain the rbc looks pink in color this is a romanovsky stain see all the rbcs they are pinkish in color the peripheral two third is pinkish and the central one third is pallar these all are normal rbcs because the stain is romanovsky see this one this is also a romanovsky stain all the rbcs are pink in color with the peripheral two third and central one third is the pallar these are normal rbcs it is normal romanovsky stain but see what is the color of rbcs here if you can notice the color of the rbc is not pink it is green rbcs are looking green in color they are not pink so of course the stain is wrong not romanovsky here what is the stain here what is the stain here the stain here is supra vital what is the stain here the stain here is the supra vital yes the supra vital stain is seen so the first thing they are seen on supra vital stain the second thing they are greenish or bluish in color greenish or bluish and they are multiple can you see they are multiple and present anywhere so hains bodies are multiple present anywhere anywhere it is not necessary only at the periphery anywhere they are present anywhere and they are also basophilic so based on these morphology along with the stain you can identify that it is a hains body give me a thumbs up so what is hains body hains body they are multiple present anywhere right basically this is denatured hemoglobin the hemoglobin no normal hemoglobin normal hemoglobin have two alpha rings two beta rings hemoglobin you know the structure of the globin the structure of the heme but sometimes the hemoglobin is denatured it is denatured such denatured hemoglobin will accumulate inside the rbc and form hains body it is it is seen in many condition but the most important just be multiple time mcqs is repeated in your previous year question papers is g6pd deficiency so yeah it is seen in thalassemia also i'm not saying no world around but yeah it is basically seen in g6pd deficiency along with thalassemia along with thalassemia you can add give me a thumbs up so it is denatured hemoglobin now there is a difference in paritin and hemoglobin this one was paritin this one is hemoglobin and the first one was dna dna means nucleus the first one was the nucleus that is the dna dna remnant give me a thumbs up let me come on the fourth one fast let me come on the fourth one the fourth one is the cabot ring cabot ring if you see the diagram of cabot ring it is a structure of eight what do you mean by eight it is the mathematical eight the number eight can you see a rbc yes you can so inside it write down eight this is cabot ring so it is looking like the eight e i g h t eight the number eight in mathematics so that it is very easy to identify no one will confuse i don't have to say it is single multiple basophilic what it is a specific structure it is looking like it that is a cabot ring so it is seen in the conditions when body have iron and arginine rich histone metabolism with uh, some defects 
when body have defect in iron metabolism and arginine rich histone metabolism right it is basically seen in pernicious anemia it is seen in let me show you a diagram can you see this diagram beautiful diagram so can you see rbc yes you all can see rbc can you appreciate inside the rbc a ring of eight this ring is cabot ring this ring is cabot ring it is seen in pernicious anemia right and the last one the fifth one is the basophilic stippling let me come on the fifth one basophilic stippling so in the basophilic stippling there is a rbc and multiple small dot like structures filling the entire cytoplasm of the rbc right so it like it's like like this so inside the rbc you can see multiple small 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 dot like structures filling entire rbc that is known as basophilic stippling let, i will show you the real diagram also it is the ribosomes or ribosomal rna it is the aggregates either ribosomes or ribosomal rna it is seen in lead lead poisoning there are many other conditions there is a pneumonia but the most important is lead poisoning let me show you okay so here it is basophilic stippling this diagram is basophilic stippling in this can you see this one can you see this one can you see this one inside this can you see the entire rbc is filled with small basophilic dot like structures yes yes so, so these dot like small the entire rbc this is basophilic stippling this is basal now what are these these are r rna ribosomal rna or ribosomes itself ribosomes or ribosomal rna that is the aggregates of ribosomes or ribosomal rna and these are seen in many conditions the most important among them is lead poisoning lead poisoning may they are seen in lead poisoning so that is the five type of um um uh, intuition bodies i have completed do you have any doubt in this so we will do some questions on that now everyone give me a thumbs up hobel jolly body papenimer body hens body cabot ring basophilic stripling can you see the morphology of all of them so i will show you a diagram and ask you what body it is can you identify yes you all can identify if i give you the diagram instead of asking what body it is i will ask you the composition can you answer yes you all can answer and i will give you a diagram instead of asking what it is what is the composition i will ask you name the condition in which it is seen so can you answer it yes give me a thumbs up everyone yes i got it good so the five type of bodies are in front of you so you want to revise you want to make five rbcs with me so make these five rbcs with me 1 2 3 4 and 5 we will try to make the five inclusion bodies So let me draw the first one. What is the first one? Hobel Jolly. So for Hobel Jolly, I would like to draw two RBCs. So it is always single. It is central or peripheral and basophilic. So this one is a diagram of Hobel Jolly body. The second one is the Papenimer. So it is always multiple and periphery. Always multiple and periphery. That is Papenimer. The third one is the Haines body. Haines body. Again, it is multiple and present anywhere. Present anywhere. But it is seen on supravital stain. This one is seen on supravital stain, not on Romanovsky stain. These two are seen on Romanovsky Romanovsky stain, right? These these are not seen on Romanovsky. So stain will differentiate basically the papenimer and the hens. Otherwise, difference zada nahi hai. The fourth one is the cabot ring. It is a ring of eight. So that is known as cabot ring. The fifth one is the basophilic stippling, multiple small dot like basophilic structure filling the entire RBC. This is known as basophilic stippling. I hope everyone got it. not even a single student have any doubt in this i guess i guess so in hobel jolly body the composition it is dna it is dna dna or remnant of the nucleus nucleus is made up of dna so remnant of the nucleus or dna papenimer body it is ferritin it is excessive of ferritin hens is hemoglobin it is denatured hemoglobin cabot may it is arginine rich histone may defect hai iron and arginine rich histone may defect hai defect in the metabolism of histone and basophilic stippling it is seen in lead poisoning and it is ribosomes either ribosomes or ribosomal rna whatever you say now see the composition of all five it is very specific very specific and you know the conditions in which they are seen you know the conditions i guess you all know the condition so the hobel jolly bodies are seen in splenectomy spinous so the person in which spleen is removed we can see many hobel jolly bodies in the peripheral smear of such person because because a uh, spleen normally removes hobel jolly body it is seen in the condition in which ferritin is more in the blood like chronic anemia of chronic disease it is seen in the blood in g6pd deficiency that is hens body g6pd deficiency uh, cabot ring are seen in pernicious anemia and basophilic stippling is seen in lead poisoning there are many conditions but lead poisoning is the main everyone give me a thumbs up so many questions can be created let me do few questions now you have to write your answer in the chat box let me see if i can see your chat give me a minute 
I guess I can see your chat. Very good. So this is the first question in front of you. Please write down your answer in the chat box. The question is in front of you. Please write down your answer. The image shows the presence of. Can you see an image? It's a very easy question. Just now I have told you the answer. Now see the image. See the RBC. So it is marked by the arrow. So there is one of the inclusion body. It is a very the simplest question I must say. So everyone is right. Yes, Priya, uh, uh, Rishinika, everyone. I guess everyone, everyone is right. So you can see multiple, single, either central or peripheral. So the answer is hobble jolly body. Everyone knows the answer. Right. Instead, I, I can give you the same image. And instead of asking what is the body, I can ask you by giving four options. A, B, C, D, what is the composition of this body? So that question is a difficult level question. So I can give you the options like is it ferritin, is it hemoglobin, is it DNA or is it ribosome? So this is a good question. So same image, but I am changing the options. So write down your option now. You can see the new options in front of you. Can you see A, B, C, D? This one. Out of this A, B, C, D, you tell what is it? Yeah, the answer is Hobbes Jolly Body from these A, B, C, D. But from the new composition, yes, yes. So again, Priya, Kartika, everyone is right. Yes. So what is it? It is Hobbes Jolly Body. So it is it is nucleus remnant. And nucleus is made up of DNA. So answer is C. So I can ask you this type of question also. So same image, I am changing the question. Again, let me change the question. With the same image, this is not the option. I am giving you new options now. So, I can give you again new four options. Where should I write A, B, C, D? So, is it seen in G6PD deficiency? Is it seen in sickle cell anemia? Is it seen in lead poisoning? Poisoning or is it seen in thalassemia? So, these are your four options. So, this body which is shown in the image, it is seen in which condition? Your four options are in front of you. So, same image I am giving you four options again. I am giving you now what is your answer in this case? So, out of these four options, you tell me what is your answer. Out of, yes, Apurva, you are first and correct, uh, uh, first and correct answer. Yes, everyone, everyone is right. So, what is it? It is seen in splenectomy. So, splenectomy in sub me kisme hota hai? So, sickle cell anemia is a condition in which body does auto splenectomy, right? So, I will go with sickle cell anemia because directly splenectomy is not given. So, indirectly splenectomy is given. So, correct answer will be B, not D. Many students are saying D, but D is not the answer. Thalassemia may we have to do sometimes splenectomy, but sickle cell anemia may splenectomy always occurs. Auto splenectomy. Give me a thumbs up everyone. If you got it. So, you can see based on the same image, I can create three questions. Now, if you have appreciated my efforts, you give me a thumbs up. So, based on the same image, I will not change the image. I will give you the same image. Now, whatever question I want to ask, you can answer it. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up now. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Should I proceed? Yes, I must. So, let me move to the next question. This is the next question. So, the answer, okay. You know the answer. Normally, the remnants of the RBC nucleus are removed by the spleen. But the person in which splenectomy is done, like functional asplenemia, sickle cell disease, they have Powell jolly body in their blood, right? So, we know the explanation. Let me come on the second question. Now, let me read the question. Don't jump. Let me read the question first. A six-year-old boy presents with lethargy. So, the patient is having anemia. Hemoglobin is only 8, 8 grams. So, you can see the reason for the lethargy with increased iron and increased ferritin. So, in the blood, you can see increased iron as well as increased ferritin. So, peripheral smear of the child is in front of you. Identify the body. Again, it is an easy question. Identify the body which is, which is shown in the image. So, the four options are in front of you. Your four options are Papanema body, Haynes body, lead poisoning and Howell Jolly. So, before I finish the question, everyone started answering. Mok, Shramaya, Vishal, Rishinika, Priya, Jitu. You all are right. Everyone is right. Very good. Very good. I, I really appreciate so, the correct answer here is Papanimer body. You can see this RBC, inside this RBC, at the periphery, you can see multiple dot-like basophilic structures. So, and in the, in the question, there is a clue that there is increased ferritin, increased ferritin. So, the correct answer here is Papanimer body. So, looking at the image and combining the clue given in the question, the correct answer here is Papanimer body. Do you have any doubt in this? Do you have any doubt in this? Should I proceed? Okay. So, the correct answer here is A. You all are right. Very good. So, these are the basophilic RBC inclusions, papanemer body. They are usually located at the periphery. These are ferritin aggregates, right? Ferritin aggregates which are seen on Romanowski stain. They are seen on Romanowski stain. So, let me come on the next question. The next question is in front of you. The following RBC inclusion is composed of. First, identify and tell me the composition. I am not saying what is the identification. I am asking the composition. So, can you see the RBCs? These are the RBCs. Inside all of them, can you see one of the inclusion body? 
So tell me the composition of this. First identify, then tell me the composition. So yes, Moksh, you are right. Yes, Rishinika. Yes, everyone is right now. Everyone is right. Very good. So what is it? First identify. Okay, everyone is right. Now write down what it is. Write down what it is. First identify. Without identify, you cannot tell the tell tell me the composition. Come on. So it is a two tire question. So the examiner knows you cannot tell the composition directly. First you have to identify. So what it is? What it is? Is it Howell Jolly? Is it Papanima? Is it Cabot Ring? It is Haynes or it is Basophilic Stripling? What it is? So see the stain. The stain is supravital. The stain. Yes, very good, Jitu. Yes, Kartike. Yes, it is Haynes body. It is Haynes body. And that's why since it is Haynes body, it is Haynes body, the answer is denatured hemoglobin. So it is made up of hemoglobin. You all are right. Very good. So instead of this question, the same question, the same image I can give, give you with four different options with four different options so whether it is basophilic stippling whether it is Haynes body whether it is hovel jolly body whether it is papanimer body so you can answer this question also of course it is a Haynes body so i can ask the composition also i can ask the composition also and i can ask the third question now what is my third question the same image but four different options in which condition it is seen so tell me the conditions in which it is seen so is it seen in g6 pd deficiency it is seen in splenectomy it is seen in pernicious anemia or it is seen in lead poisoning. In which condition it is seen? So, of course, it is a hen's body. We all know it is made up of denatured hemoglobin. And it is seen in which condition? Yes, it is seen in G6PD deficiency. So, you can see how beautifully, based on the same image, we are creating 3-3 three, three questions. Now, I cannot launch all 3 questions based on all 5 images. So, there will be total 15 IBQs. It is a vital area. You got it? So, correct answer here is D. Correct answer. So, it is always seen on supravital stain only. It is not seen on Romanowski stain. It is a Haynes body. It is usually seen in G6PD deficiency and it is the denatured hemoglobin denatured hemoglobin supravital stains such as crystal wallet there are many supravital stains the main is crystal wallet right so okay so let me so there are many conditions g6pd is one of them but along with it it is also seen in glutathione synthetase deficiency some drugs poisoning some toxin some toxins and unstable hemoglobin they are seen in these condition also but the most important is g6pd if you want to learn all it's good but if you don't want to learn all so g6pd deficiency is the main is the main cause of Haynes body causes of Haynes body which are not seen on romanowski which are seen on supravital i am revising you again again so coming on the next question let me see yeah so this is an easy question i guess can you see a rbc simple question tell me the condition in which it is seen what is the inclusion inside it? This is the inclusion. First, identify the inclusion. I'm not asking what it is. First, identify the inclusion. Whatever the inclusion it is, tell me the condition in which it is seen. Is it seen in HBH disease, hemoglobin, BART, pernicious anemia or malaria? So, yes, now everyone is right. So, yes, of course. So, what is it? Can anyone tell me? First, identify what it is. First, identify. Okay, let me give you the four options. What it is? So, A, B, C, D. So, is it basophilic stippling? Is it cabot ring? Is it Hovel Jolly body? Is it Papanimer body? What it is? Yeah, so it is Cabot ring. So once you have identified it is Cabot ring, so you all know Cabot ring is seen in pernicious anemia. Yes, so the answer is pernicious anemia. It is a Cabot ring, ring of it, and it is seen in pernicious anemia. So it is Cabot ring, and it is seen in abnormalities in the metabolism in iron and arginine rich histone. So that is the condition in which it is seen, right? That usually occurs in pernicious anemia, right? And post-penectomy also and pernicious anemia. These are the two causes of Cabot ring. So spot the diagnosis. The easiest question I must say. Spot the diagnosis. So can you see these RBCs? One, two, three. What is present inside them? Is it Howell Jolly body, Haynes body, Cabot ring or basophilic stippling? Easy question. Very easy question. Spot the diagnosis. Should I, I cannot zoom the image. If you can do, please zoom and see. Yes, so these all RBCs which I have marked, they have multiple dot-like structures inside them. Multiple dot-like structures inside them. So because of multiple dot-like structures inside them, yes, of course, it is, it is, the answer is basophilic stippling. It is basophilic stippling, right? You all are right. So it is basophilic stippling. It is made up of either ribosomes or ribosomal RNA, right? So that is the condition. Now, in which condition it is seen? There is a mnemonic. The mnemonic is lunatic. Basically, it is seen in L for lead poisoning. L4, if you want to learn all, it's good. But if you want to learn only one cause, it is lead poisoning. U, U means unstable hemoglobin. N, N means nucleotidase deficiency. N, A means anemia due to B12 deficiency, megaloblastic anemia. T means thalassemia. I means infection. And C means cirrhosis. So in all these conditions, basophilic stippling is seen in RBC, not only in lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is one of the cause. So what is the mnemonic? 
What is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is lunatic. Lunatic. See the full form. Lunatic is the mnemonic. So L for lead poisoning, U for unstable hemoglobin, N for nucleotide deficiency, A for anemia seen in B12 deficiency, T is thalassemia, I is infection, C is cirrhosis. In all these conditions, basophilic stippling is seen in the RBC. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So most of the time question always comes on lead poisoning. So you should know all the causes. Give me a thumbs up. So I am done with the first portion in hematology that is RBC inclusion. Now before coming on the anemia, there is another one more vital portion in RBC that is shapes of RBC. Many image based questions come from the various shapes of the RBC. Let me see how many shapes you know. Okay. Can you, do you know all these shapes? All these shapes of, okay, let me, let me summarize. Can you see if RBC is there? What is the normal diagram of RBC? In normal diagram of RBC, this is the RBC, the peripheral two-third is pink in color because the peripheral two-third of the cytoplasm contains hemoglobin. This is peripheral two-third. It is pink in color. But the central one-third is empty. The central one-third is empty. It is known as Pella. This is central one-third. This is normal. This is normal. It is present in MU. And peripheral two-third. Peripheral two-third is colored. It is colored. It is having hemoglobin. That's why pink in color. This is normal RBC. Now see these all RBCs. These all are not normal. So see the first one. In the first one, I can see a dot-like structure at the center. So this RBC is known as target cell. This RBC is known as target cell. Hemoglobin is concentrated at the center instead of periphery. So this dot is not blue dot. It is not inclusion body. It is hemoglobin only. So instead of periphery, it is at the center. You can see. So pink color is at the center. So that is target cell. Number one. Can you see the bite cell? Bite. So the complete RBC was like this. Someone have taken one bite of this cake. It is like a cake, the circular cake. The circular cake. Out of the circular cake, one has taken a bite from here. So the remaining one is like this. So this, this. So one of the bite is taken. So that is known as bite cell. That is known as bite cell. You all know sickle cell. I guess no one is there who don't know sickle cell. Sickle cell is sickle shape. You know what is sickle shape? Ada Chandrama. Just a second. I can't see your chat. Give me a minute. To re-enter again. Uh, yeah, I can see now. Okay. So can you see sickle cell? Tear drop. So it is a tear. Asu. Aankh ka asu. From eyes. It is looking like a tear. Tear drop. The drop of a tear. Aankh ke asu ke shape ka hai. Uh, now there are two cells. Per and bur. Now you have to differentiate in dono pe multiple time PYQs hain. The image based question in your previous year questions. Per and bur. Both have spikes. But here the spikes are very sharp. The spikes are very sharp on the surface of the RBC. They are very sharp. So it is known as spur. And if they are blunt, they are not very sharp. They are blunt. The spikes are blunt. So they are known as burr. B for blunt. B for burr. S for sharp. S for spur. No, you will never forget. What I am saying? What I am saying? Sharp ka spur. Blunt ka burr. Now spur is also known as acanthocyte. And burr is also known as echinocyte. What is, what is the summary? Let me show you the summary. Let me draw two RBCs here. This is the first RBC. This is the second. Okay, let me take another page. Let me draw two RBCs. This is the first RBC based on the surface. The spikes are present on the surface of the RBC, but these spikes are very sharp. They are very sharp, right? On this surface of RBC also spikes are present, but they are very blunt. They are very blunt, right? So here the spikes are sharp. Here they are blunt. The spikes are present, right? But sharp. Sharp means spur, S for spur, S for sharp and blunt ka B is burr. Now you will never forget, sharp ka S and blunt ka B, spur and burr. But what is the thing you have to learn the another names of them, another name. Spur is known as acanthocyte, acanthocyte. Instead of erythrocyte, it is known as acanthocyte. Normal RBC is erythrocyte. Instead of erythrocyte, now it is known as acanthocyte and here it is known as echinocyte. Echinocyte. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Yeah, I will tell you the conditions also. Don't worry. I am coming on that point. So, that, that first understand the shapes. That is spur and burr. Right. Now, crystals ko to chodo. You can see Rowlex formation. If multiple RBCs are sticking to each other, forming a train-like structures, that is Rowlex formation. Coming on RBC agglutination. Multiple are sticking with each other, but not in a train-like structure. In a bunch. So, that is known as RBC agglutination. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. One more table. The same table. Can you see the complete RBC is filled with hemoglobin. The complete RBC is pink. What I have told you, normal RBC only peripheral two-third is filled. The central one-third is empty. But here the complete RBC is pink in color. So it is known as spherocyte. It is not erythrocyte. It is spherocyte. Spherocyte. It is elliptocyte. Instead of circle, it is like egg. Egg shape. So that's why it is known as elliptocyte. Elliptical in shape. Right. 
टीयर ड्रॉप आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू टीयर ड्रॉप द अनदर नेम ऑफ टीयर ड्रॉप यू हैव टू लर्न इज डेक्रोसाइट टीयर ड्रॉप इज नोन एज डेक्रोसाइट राइट वट इज सिस्टोसाइट टूटे फूटे आरबीसी द द टीयर द टीयर द आरबीसी हैव टीयर्स इट इज ब्रोकन डाउन सो इट 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 कैन बी यूजली हेलमेट शेप यू नो इट इज नोन एज हेलमेट द हेलमेट वी वेयर ऑन अवर हेड वाइल ड्राइविंग अ टू व्हीलर सो दैट इज हेलमेट शेप और ट्राइंगल शेप सो दैट इज सिस्टोसाइट इकाइनो एंड एकेंथो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन इन इकाइनो द ब्लंट the blunt spurs are there and in acantho the sharp the sharp spurs the sharp uh, spikes are there so echinocytes are bur cells and acantho cytes are spur cells we have already seen the bur and the spur right target we have already seen right so these are the various shapes you know not only shapes so examiner can give you any shape in the question in a image and ask you identify the cell so it is the easiest question to identify the cell based on the image but what is the difficult level in which condition it is seen so learn one one condition i am providing you this table okay i cannot provide the notes on youtube okay great so i can provide you the ppt please tag me on the telegram i can provide you this ppt if you wish or this table is available everywhere in all books so please learn the condition in which it is seen so target cells are seen in thalassemia basically in thalassemia and post prenatal bite cells are seen in g6pd deficiency sickle cell of course seen in sickle cell anemia right tear drop cells are seen in myelofibrosis spur and bur spur is seen in a beta lipoproteinemia and bur is seen in uremia so learn the main main condition main main condition rowlex formation is seen in multiple myeloma right so you have to learn the main main conditions in which it is seen so spur bur we have already seen the difference what is spur it is known as acanthocyte and what is bur it is known as echinocyte so here the narrow base sharp projections are there and here broader blunt projections are there right these are the conditions in which it is seen everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so spur bur you got it spur versus bur i don't need to tell you again and again there are sharp projections in spur and there are blunt projections in the bur these are bur these are spur so is pe bahut questions aate hain so the question is in front of you the question just a second give me a minute so the question is in front of you can you answer it can you answer it uh someone is giving me some mnemonic can corn spur sharp spur i am not getting it anyways uh so the question is in front of you please try to answer it the following image shows the presence of what the following image shows the presence can you see the arrows see this arrow see this arrow it is pointing towards some cell okay let me mark that cell can you see this one can you see this one can you see this one yes so what it is is it a target cell target cell no target cell have a central dot like structure is it a sickle cell no sickle cell is like this like this no it is not sickle is it a spherocyte spherocyte is a rbc with complete pink in color no central pillar no it is not that so what it is yes you all are right it is a cystocyte cystocytes are the broken rbcs now why cystocytes are seen the correct answer here is b so these two rbcs which are shown in the image can you see this one marked by the arrow and this one marked by that they do not have any fixed shape they can have any shape right so these are the fragmented rbcs now why why these are so can you see rbcs converted these are the normal rbcs they converted into fragmented portions fragmented rbcs the fragmented rbcs are known as cystocytes now appreciate the shape appreciate usually i said usually they are helmet shape usually they are helmet or triangle but they can have any shape please see they are fragmented they are fragmented so usually they are helmet or triangle shape but they can have any shape because they are fragmented now the question arises why they form so can you see there is a blood vessel inside the blood vessel this is the endothelial lining because the endothelial lining is continuous normally blood vessels are smooth smooth from inside the blood vessel wall is smooth from inside because of the covering by the endothelial lining now this is a rbc when rbcs are traveling inside the rbc inside the blood vessel in the lumen of the blood vessel since the wall is very smooth they are not fragmented now imagine a condition when there is any thrombus formation here you know what is thrombus i guess so there is a thrombus formation there is a thrombus formation inside the rbc due to any reason there are multiple reasons of thrombus formation so this rbc will come here when this rbc will come here it will got hindered it will there is a collision between the rbc and the thrombus because of this collision the rbc will get fragmented and cystocytes are formed have you got it have you got it so it is seen this condition is known as maha this condition so uh, the person will have anemia because most of the rbcs are broken down so the person will have anemia such anemia is known as maha microangiopathic hemolytic anemia 
see the full form of maha micro angiopathic hemolytic anemia micro angiopathic because there is a problem in the micro blood vessels hemolytic because the rbcs are fragmented anemia so give me a thumbs up and it is seen in condition where thrombus is formed so it is known as maha in maha or in thrombus formation the cystocytes are formed now appreciate all these cystocytes can you appreciate this one the circles you can see they can be triangle they can be they can be yes so yes it is typically hus it is seen in many conditions it is seen right so satish is asking which is the best book for hematology uh, so for hematology satish my answer is tejinder singh so tejinder singh is a specific book for hematology for images specially uh, you can uh, refer so it is a very best book crisp up to the point yeah lekin maybe the level is little bit more at uh, at ambiguous part but that is the best the details are given very crystal clear beautiful images so please refer i can send you the soft copy if you tag me on the telegram right i can send you the soft copy of tejinder singh otherwise robins is good you can go with the robins at ambiguous level robins is sufficient whatever given in the robins you can go with that otherwise if you want a good atlas in hematology everything is atlas the images on the hematology so tejinder singh is the best along with the theory it is the best book anyways the next question is in front of you uh, identify the rbcs shown in the image please identify the rbcs shown in the image see the projections see the projections are they sharp or are they blunt first decide the projections so i guess they are sharp since they are sharp so it is spur sharp or spur what is the other name of spur you all are right yes it is a kinetocyte right if i show you blunt it may be kinocyte but not in this image so it is not a kinocyte not cystocyte not spherocyte so you should be able to identify other three also now close your eyes and imagine other three diagram now examiner can change the image so answer will change you know the diagram of a kinocyte cystocyte we have done last question spherocyte you already know the completely covered rbc right give me a thumbs up so yes a kinocyte spur cell you all are right very good very good now this is a so instead of this image if i am giving you this image the answer will become a kinocyte right so you should know okay this one this one the last last question based on shapes can you see this one what it is identify spotter what it is what it is what it is so identify it i have marked the pathology shown in the image so is it microcytic hypochromic cells is it evidence of hemolysis is it sickling crisis or is it rowlex formation is it what it is what it is so you all are right yes it is rowlex formation very good very good the correct answer here is d now can any one of you tell me rowlex formation takes place in which condition tell me the condition in which rowlex formation takes place tell me the name of the condition yes g2 it is multiple myeloma okay i got it now g2 or anyone else you tell me why why rowlex is formed in multiple myeloma pathology is something you should be able to answer why you should be able to answer why and how in pathology pathology answers your why pathology answers your how why it is taking place why multiple myeloma everyone knows but why tell me the reason for why what is happening actually actually what is happening okay in multiple myeloma there is a condition in which mutation takes place in b lymphocyte so it is a b lymphocyte in which mutation takes place normally b lymphocytes form immunoglobulins b lymphocyte get converted into plasma cells okay they get converted into plasma cells and plasma cells form immunoglobulin sites because of which abnormal plasma cells are formed these abnormal plasma cells will form abnormal immunoglobulin which have only light chain no heavy chain what i am saying they have only light chain light chain no heavy chain so it is light chain gammopathy right so only light chains are formed so it is not a immunoglobulin it is a abnormal protein you can say it is a abnormal protein which is only light chain it is it is not having heavy, heavy chain so since heavy chain are absent i cannot call it a immunoglobulin this is a immunoglobulin too light and too heavy but this is not now what this it is positively charged it is positively charged this light chain is positively charged now let me form rbcs normal rbcs have negative charge on them normal rbcs my rbc your rbc that's why they repel with each other and they do not cluster they do not bind with each other normal but in a patient with multiple myeloma what is the condition these abnormal proteins are too much which are positively charged they will come and neutralize the negative charge of rbc so the negative charge of rbc is neutralized by the abnormal form protein by the abnormal plasma cells or abnormal or mutated b cell so all the negative and positive will neutralized it will be neutralized now rbc do not have any charge neither negative nor positive so they will stick with each other and they will form the rowlex now you should know the reason for everything this is the reason for rowlex formation how many of you were knowing this reason 
Give me a thumbs up. Come on, give me a thumbs up. So, question can come on anything, right? So, next time, maybe the question on this. The Rolex formation is associated with increased positively charged proteins. Positively charged proteins are the gamma globulins, only light chain. These positively charged proteins will neutralize the negatively charged RBCs. That's why the RBC will become neutral and allow them to form stacks. They stick to each other and they will form a stack of four or more cells that is known as Rolex. I want thumbs up from everyone. Thumbs up from everyone. So, in hematology, I have told you three areas are there for IBQs. Not in hematology. Basically, in hematology, yeah. In hematology, there are three areas. I have to teach you RBC disorders, WBC disorders and platelet disorders. Today, I have started RBC disorders. In RBC disorders, again, there are three areas which I have to teach you for images. For images. We have completed infusion bodies today. We have completed the shapes of RBCs today. Now, the third thing, anemias. It is a big thing. So, today I am not covering anemias. But tomorrow, at the same time, we will start anemias. The image-based question on all type of anemias. So, basically, there are more than 15, 10 to 15 important anemias in your syllabus. Iron deficiency anemia, megaloblastic anemia, aplastic anemia, all hemolytic anemia, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. So, on all of them, we will do multiple bunch of questions. Now, please set your reminders every day, 9 a.m. in the morning. 9 a.m. in the morning for one hour, 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning. I will come on YouTube on this channel daily and I will take a free lecture for you. So, then this week is uh, basically image-based question. So, for the next seven days, I am covering image-based question of entire pathology or from Robbins. First, hematology, then systemic pathology. We will take one month system daily and then general pathology. So, I will cover entire pathology in 7 to 10 days, I hope. After that, what topics you want in free, please write down in the comment box. Don't um, get hesitated. Whatever topic from pathology you want on YouTube by me, if you want like my teaching style, I can take that topic. So, please write down your topic of choice here. Uh, I can take more lectures also. So, please, every day, I want everyone at 9 a.m. in the morning to be live with me on YouTube on an academy. Uh, YouTube channel. So, thank you very much for being with me here. I would like to stop. Uh, there are a few announcements for you guys. Uh, just a second, then you people can go. So, thank you very much. I really enjoyed teaching you. Hopefully, same from your side also. If you like the lecture, don't forget to click on the like button before leaving the lecture. Please share the link with your friends, colleagues, everyone, all your batchmates, all the medicals you know. Subscribe our YouTube channel if you have not done yet. Right. Uh, this is the calendar for April. April. Uh, on an academy, we conduct free tests. So, you all can participate in these free tests, in all these. So, there is a free test on 4th, April, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, right? So, many days are gone, 8th and 9th is still there. So, you can see what is the topic and what is the time of the test. So, you can use my code to enter in this free test. My code is my surname, Sachdev. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev. So, S-A-C-H-D-E-V, Sachdev 10 is the code. By using this code, you can enter in the free test, right? There is NEET PG 2022 All India Mock Test going to happen on 17th April morning 9 a.m. I want everyone to participate in this. Let's see your rank now. It is free. The test is absolutely free. It is a mock test and you can enter the test using the same code such they've done. So again, use my code and enter in the test. Uh, the Unacademy test series is available now and you can purchase it. You can take the subscription for that. Uh, we have launched MBBS Prof 1 exclusively for MBBS First Prof students. So, any one of you or your juniors are there in the First Prof, you can uh, ask them to take the subscription. There is a 3-month, 6-month and 12-month plan in which we will help the students to pass the university exam uh, with distinction and to prepare for next for the First Prof subjects, Anatomy, Biochemistry and Physiology. So, it is only for MBBS First Prof, they can take the subscription, right? Okay. And uh, yeah. After every plus class, we will give you a bunch of 510 MCQs to practice, right? Okay, so on an academy, there are two types of subscription. The plus, you will get only an academy and an iconic along with an academy, you will get prep letter access also. So once you take the subscription, you will be eligible for all these dedicated batches. You can enter in any, any, any batch, right? So, okay, so these are various plans available with us. So, these are the plants with plus subscription. These are the plants with iconic subscription. These are the plants with light. In light, you will get only test series, right? Test series is available in the light. So, the minimum is two months, four years. You can see the various plants. You can see the prices of all plants. You can see the prices, compare the prices, see the various plants. Whatever plan is suitable to you, you can take the subscription for that. Now, you can notice longer the plant, cheaper it is. So, 
uh, if you are first prof second prof student go with a longer plan four year three year two year if you want to give a trial you can take as small as two months also it's your choice but the best part is that whatever plan you are taking if you apply my code the same code such dev 10 you will get straight forward 10 percent discount before payment you have to apply this code so what is the code it is S A C H D E V such Dev such Dev Tan. Thank you very much for being with me. I want everyone tomorrow daily at 9 a.m. in the morning on YouTube with me. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Study hard. All the best. See you tomorrow morning. Bye bye.